Welcome back everybody, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios for a CUBE conversation. It's a great way to get uh, a little closer to people when we're not at the, the hustle and bustle at a big show. Although this guest just came from a big show. It's, he's Eric Seidman, Director Solutions Marketing for Veritas Technology, just back from Microsoft. Welcome, That's Eric. That's right. Thank you very much. So how was the desert? <laughs> it was very hot. <laughs> it was very it hot. It was very hot. So yeah. big Microsoft partner show, Inspire. Right. What was kind of the vibe? Things are obviously going really well for Microsoft. What we read about, they're gaining market share on the cloud space against against Amazon, mm -hmm. so you know Satya really seems to have done a great job moving that company. Indeed, so uh, there was a lot of focus on Azure at the show, but I thought it was a great event for their partners that are attending there, uh, not only to get uh, more immersed in the capabilities of Microsoft, but also to meet with companies like us, like Veritas, right. be able to learn more about our solutions, how they complement what Microsoft is doing, particularly in the public cloud space, right. and help those partners generate more revenue and help solve their customers business problems as so well. So it's interesting, you guys are big in appliances, you've got a couple appliances, um, one we'll talk about specifically the Flex appliance, mm -hmm. but more generically, some people might have a question, right? There's all this rise of public cloud, they're getting more and more percentage of the workloads. Mm -hmm. How does an appliance fit in a public cloud world? Yeah, so that's a great question, and we got that a little bit at the, the uh, Inspire show as well. Right, right. So first off, you have to kind of consider that everything that uh, we do as a company comes out as software first, right? So we're we're software defined, everything basically. Uh, but there's a lot of consideration that we, you know, look at what our customers' requirements are, and so there's many customers that prefer to consume in that agility model that software defined allows them to do in terms of being able to be very quickly scale, add new features and capabilities on the hardware of their choice. So it kind of, you know, it's software defined, particularly storage, gives many customers that cloud agility that they're looking for. Right. But there's other sets of companies uh, that are also looking for that same software features and capabilities, but prefer more of an appliance consumption model. Uh, maybe they're not ready for that bifurcated type of approach to software and hardware, or they're looking for faster implementation or fully supported solutions. So we provide our customers kind of the best of both worlds. You know, they can uh, consume our solutions, our data protection and storage products as software or as appliances based on the requirements of the company. Right. Yeah. And what's kind of the special, for people that aren't as familiar with appliances, right? We always hear about industry standard hardware mm -hmm. and you know, the hardware's going to zero. What are some of the advantages that you can accomplish with an appliance that you couldn't just use you know, with, with regular kind of off-the-shelf hardware? Yeah, so, well certainly we take care of that integration and test and it's fully supported configuration. Um, so they get all of the benefits of that. But we also, I would say our unique capability from an appliance standpoint is that it truly is software defined and remains software defined. So as an example, if a customer uh, uh, chooses to deploy our access appliance, which is a uh, uh, long-term retention appliance, which complements our net backup uh, data protection solutions, even though they're getting it as an appliance, that software license isn't tied or locked to that appliance. It's still licensed separately. So as an example, if we come out with a new type of uh, s storage appliance, they're free to move that license to it. Or if they choose to even move to a, a third party hardware, that is a newer, greener, cheaper, faster right, storage right. server, they can transfer that license to that. So while they're consuming it as an appliance for all the benefits about it, around a fully supported right. um, solution for them, uh, we still provide that software defined flexibility or capability. Right. So that's one of the unique Aspects, aspects. Of that. and then yeah. really you're trying to you deliver you know kind of this mixed benefit to the client as well. So they've they've got the benefits of having it locally. You can put fast fast storage in there and have you know local storage as well as manage the pushing out of the other data that maybe is more yeah, well, in the public cloud or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So if we uh, uh, take kind of a look at what we were speaking to our uh, uh, Microsoft partners at Inspire. It was around our appliances, and like you were saying, well, why are you talking about appliances? You know, the big push to Azure and all. So we were able to show them with our Flex appliance, which is a very unique uh, containerized solution for uh, multiple net backup solutions, being able to scale those out in containers versus physical uh, storage uh, devices or servers. And, uh, and also turn on or off cloud tiering capabilities as a service as well. So customers may have a requirement for multiple net backup domains, and in the future they want to tier to Azure or another public cloud, they can simply turn on that cloud tiering service in this Flex appliance. And then our, uh, 
or access appliance that I mentioned that complements our net backup solutions for on-premise long-term retention can also tier to Azure public clouds as right, well. So, right. And those things both you know, work together where we have very uh, high performance uh, retention in the Flex appliance for the best RPO, RTO of the uh, data protection services there and that can tier to access for additional on-prem storage at a lower cost per terabyte and then either or through both tier to the cloud. So depending on the type of data. So what uh, you know, a customer may have a requirement where they have to keep data on site. Maybe it's for compliance or governance reasons. Right, right. And then other domains may be okay to move that data longer term into public cloud. So the appliances provide that type of flexibility that enables the customer to put the data where it meets the requirements, either for cost, performance, or for compliance for requirements. Right. So I just want, I'd like to kind of go up a notch. Okay. Um, you know, you're out with customers all the time and, and listen to their needs and requirements. We hear all the time, right, the explosion of data and stru structured data, regular mm -hmm. data. Um, how are you seeing that really manifest itself in customers that have specific problems today that are you know, sitting at the table with you guys. I mean, what kind of the stories are they telling you of the kind of the rise of the data uh, right. quantity that they're having to deal with? And I don't know if you have some interesting Yeah, well, anecdotes. certainly uh, it's not getting deleted. <laughs> <You> <laughs> yes. know, uh, so more and more of it's being retained uh, for various reasons. Uh, some of it's for uh, data protection reasons and ensuring that they're uh, able to meet like litigation requirements and things of like that. So there's a lot of long-term retention for those type of requirements. But more and more, we're also seeing the, the growth of this type of data just for the use of mining it. Right. And getting more value out of it. And it, they're not deleting it, they're finding that there's ways to uh, monetize that data in different means. So we, we see that and that's one of the reasons why our um, access appliance has been very well accepted in the market because it can retain a, uh, vast amounts of data on-prem at a low price point and be utilized for either the backup uh, data protection aspects or the archival use cases as well. Right, so one of the concepts we talk a lot about on theCUBE is, is about um, you know, data as a balance sheet asset, mm. which it really never really was before, right? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a liability because you had to buy a bunch of, a bunch of gear to yeah. store it and you couldn't keep it all and it was too expensive and you threw stuff away. Clearly, the pendulum has swung and now data is very valuable. Some would argue it's the core asset of the business. And so I'm just curious if you've seen a change in the investment kind of profile, the ROI metrics, some of the ways that people are making purchase decisions in a world where they want to keep everything, mm -hmm. where they recognize that data is an asset, and now it's really, it's not a cost to hold this stuff that's expensive to hold, but it's really now more of an investment to drive an asset that's hopefully going to drive beyond cost savings to get into new businesses, Certainly. new opportunities, revenue. Yeah. How is that manifesting itself in, in some of the decision processes that the buyers are going through? Yeah, so, th I mean, that's a, uh, often we hear a lot of those similar problems within our customers that we talk to. And uh, the, I think they're the biggest challenge is, as you were talking about the cost a aspect, they're really trying to figure out, well, how do we move from a, a cost center or a burden for storing all of this data to a value that delivers uh, a value to the company. Right, right, and business so benefit. A business benefit from a, from a, cost, a cost nature. And, uh, and we help customers achieve that in many different ways. Uh, we have uh, an object storage offering that has an uh, integrated cognitive engine that can provide very, very deep search capabilities as well as integration into external ML and AI uh, facilities to extract more value from the data. Right. We have some cool products like InfoMap that will allow a company to really see where all those important assets are stored and mm -hmm. what type of data that they have and where it's located, uh, you know, basically uh, data center wide, uh, company wide, and even what's in the cloud. And that's, right. that's from InfoMap. And so they can see, like, they may have important data that needs to be treated with GDPR compliance. How do you know where that's located, right? And how do I make sure I'm meeting those type of requirements? So some of, those are some of the kind of the tools that we're helping our customers move from that cost center to more of a value proposition where they're delivering business benefits and revenue to the company. Right, right. I was just, I'm just curious on the GDPR thing. We had a little thing here when it was GDPR day a couple Fridays um, I heard about ago. That, yeah. um, 
How were those conversations? Was it a, a Y2K kind of a moment in, in, in the, the months leading up to it? Was it not that big uh, a deal? Did people get out in front of it? It seems like the regs passed yeah. a long time ago, but then the, the, the due dates were delayed for quite a bit, and then, oh my goodness, it's a GDPR day. Yeah, well I was in the industry back in the, in the Y2K days. <laughs> uh, I don't think it had that, it didn't have that same type of uh, feeling of uh, impending doom or something like, right. oh, we don't know what's going Until gonna... the first couple of fines drop, I think. Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe. But uh, it, I think it was more about, well, this is predictable. Right. Uh, we had been working on GDPR, being able to provide the compliance to that for, for a couple years before you know, that regulation came up, to, you know, working with our customers in Europe and such. So we've built a lot of infrastructure and software and capabilities that helped customers achieve that, the, you know, before the requirements hit. So I guess from our standpoint at Veritas, while it, it looked pretty menacing, you know, maybe from the outside, but we had been working with our customers all along to, so that they're already in that mode where they can comply with those new requirements. Right. But it just seems so, it's so counter to what computers do well, right? Computers <laughs> write very well and they copy very well. Right, right. And you know, so much effort in terms of your product stuff is protecting that data, replicating the data, duplicating the data, making sure it's, mm -hmm. and now in a GDPR requirement, you know, I want you to take me out of your system. Like where exactly is that record in? How yep. many versions yeah. of that record are stored where? It's kind of the, the that funny movie they made about the cloud. It's in the cloud, it's everywhere, it's nowhere at the same time. Yeah. So was that a, a kind of unique challenge or you guys have been on top of that? Well, we've been on top time. of that, right? So that's where I think we, we brought this capability to our customers. So they were kind of like, we're, you know, take a deep breath, we're okay. Because we have tools that can classify information and we've had those for a very, very long time. So that customers can already s know what their PII data is, right. where it's located, and then automatically treat it in different manners, like provide the right type of security uh, associated with that PII data, stored in the right locations, all of those type of aspects, we've already automated that process through right. any of our various capabilities. Uh, some of them within our storage product, like I mentioned the cognitive engine in our object storage, and external uh, software that uh, we bring to the party. And of course the visualization of it, so that you can see it all through the InfoMap capability. Right. So I'm curious, we're halfway through 2018, which I still can't believe we're halfway yeah. through 2018. So as you look forward, what are some of the priorities for the balance of the year? What are some of the priorities going forward? Well, for us, it's still meeting, helping our, those customers meet their GDPR requirements and ensuring that they're on top of those, being able to visualize where their data is very, very important. And then like we were talking about just a couple minutes ago, extracting the value from that data. So you'll see some new technologies coming from us later on this year that I'm really excited about. I'm looking forward to talking more about those with you in the future right. and our customers that are going to continue that value proposition. Well, we'll continue to help them store vast amounts of their growth of unstructured data, doing it economically, doing it in new ways, and, get, and again, extracting more value uh, from those data sets as well. Yeah, I love use vast. I don't, I, you know, the, the rate and the amount and the quantity and the value is just going up, 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 uh, up. Is. So you guys are uh, in a pretty good space. We think so, <laughs> yeah, very good. All right, yeah. Eric, well thanks for taking a few minutes and uh, welcome back from Vegas. I'm glad it's not 115. <laughs> yeah, so am for I. You. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, he's Eric Seidman, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE, we're in the Palo Alto studios having a CUBE conversation. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.